Hey yo, what up everyone? How are we all doing? I hope everyone's okay, doing well. Um, back with something very different today. Um, how big? No, how big? How the universe is way bigger than you think. Um, I know it's a little off track. We like we're kind of used to doing history on the channel, but uh, I figured it's Friday. We can do something a little bit different, and then on Monday we'll pick it back up, go back to oversimplified, or maybe have a look around, see what the comments are saying. But uh, yeah, man, I just thought it'd be a nice change to. And I've never seen this, so, you know, why not, eh? Um, but yeah, let's get straight into it and see what we got. This is a real-life lore video made possible by Squarespace. Make your next move with a beautiful website from Squarespace. This is Earth. You live here on this planet somewhere, and everything that you've ever known is located right here. But just how small exactly is Earth when compared to the scale of the entire universe? Let's start by zooming out to where we can see our nearest cosmic neighbor, the moon. You may think that the moon is very close to Earth since it dominates our night skies, but in reality the moon isn't this close to our planet, it's actually about this far away. 384,400 kilometers away from you right now on average. You could fit 30 entire Earths in between this distance, Shit. and if you somehow were able to drive a <laughs> car at a constant 100 kilometers per hour speed, it would take you about 160 days to drive the entire... That's crazy. You know, when you look at when you look at the moon from obviously where we are, you think, ah, oh, <laughs> there's no way you could fit another Earth in between there. You just, well, I probably not, not smart enough to comprehend, you know, distance that big. Well, I don't think anyone is to be honest, but you know. Your distance. Despite this incredible distance, however, 12 humans have actually set foot here, representing the furthest away that any individual human has ever been away from the Earth, and one of humanity's greatest achievements. This is what the Earth would look like from there if you were standing there with them, and if you wanted to communicate with somebody back at home, it would take a message about two and a half seconds to travel between you and them, since that's how fast the speed of light can travel at. This is a photo that was taken on right, Mars. Right, okay. It took me a second to figure out what you were saying, and I was like, what do you mean, send a message? Okay. That tiny dot that you see there is Earth as seen from the Martian surface. On average, Mars is an incredible 225 million kilometers away from Earth, but that distance can be as high as 401 million kilometers. That means that whenever humanity finally gets around to landing a human on the planet, that person will be 986 times further away Fuck. from Earth than the astronauts who landed on the moon were. In addition, the time delay for sending a message from Mars back to Earth isn't just two and a half seconds, it's actually more like 20 minutes each direction which would render Shit. instant communication in the event of an emergency impossible. When we zoom out even further away, we can find the Voyager 1 space probe, which is the furthest away man-made object from Earth. It is currently located 138 AUs from the Earth. AU, AU meaning uh. astronomical unit, which is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. As you can probably tell, I have... I've, uh, this is not my area of, of knowledge at all, so I'm going to seem really stupid in this, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably stronger when it comes to history, so today's just going to be a genuine me learning a lot. Which means that Voyager 1 is 138 times further away from us than the sun is. At Shit. some point on its long voyage, Voyager 1 turned its camera around and took this photograph. Mm -mm. It may not look like much at first, but in my opinion, this is the greatest single photograph ever taken in all of human history. This tiny, pale blue dot is Earth, and I don't think that anybody has ever said something as amazing about this as Carl Sagan when he said, If you look at it, you see a dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever lived, lived out their lives. The aggregate of all our joys and sufferings. Thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and every forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilizations, every king and every peasant, every young couple in love, every hopeful child, every mother and every father, every inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, Every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there, on a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. It is crazy when you say it like that, isn't it? Like, 
kind of makes your problems feel small. You know, you look at the size of the universe and you think, here's me, fucking worrying about paying rent on my little property, which is a grain of sand in the grand scheme of things. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite humbling, isn't it? Voyager 1 is currently traveling at 17 kilometers every single second, but even at that speed, it won't break out of the reach of our solar system for another 30,000 years. Shit. Once we go beyond the solar system, we arrive in our interstellar neighborhood. Here we shift to the light year unit of measurement, which is the distance that light travels in a full Earth year, or about 9.461 trillion kilometers. The star Proxima Centauri here is the closest other star to us other than our sun sun, but it's still 4.24 light years away from us. To put that into perspective, if it was heading in the right direction, it would still take Voyager 1 over 70,000 years to reach it. In other words, if you drove your- 70,000 years? How long's, how long's mankind been around? Do I hazard a guess? So the Earth's, what, three and a half billion years old? Man, I'm not gonna lie, I, I, I should know that. How long has humanity been around? I don't know. Very ignorant. Uh, if I had to hazard a guess, in our most primal for forms, one and a half million. Six million years. Wasn't even close. <laughs> Wasn't even close. Okay, but at least we know for reference now. But. Car at 100 kilometers an hour, like in our previous example to the moon, it would take over six times longer than the entire age of the universe is just to Fuck. finally get there, and it wouldn't even exist still when you arrive. <laughs> when we zoom out even further, we can see the entire Milky Way galaxy, inside of which Earth is located right here. This yellow dot is the furthest extent of humanity's radio broadcasts throughout history, which means that any possible aliens who live outside of this range are totally unaware of humanity's presence. You just kind of thinking that, I don't know if any of my viewers have uh, played Mass Effect. I'm just thinking like how quick in Mass Effect, like you jump in your ship and like you travel from here to here, to there, to here, to here, to here. And I know you can kind of visit Earth in a weird way. Well, especially number three, but it's weird just how small we are, and that it's easily missed, like, I don't know. Let me know if you play Mass Effect. It's complete silence outside of this yellow dot as far as we are currently aware, but the entire galaxy spans over 100,000 light years from end to end. There are over 100 billion stars and over 100 billion planets inside of our galaxy. But you have never seen the full glory of the galaxy at night, because 99% of the stars that you can see with the naked eye are limited to this small, tiny region oh right here. Oh my here. god. But even this massive galaxy is nothing compared to the rest of what's out there. Zooming out even further and we arrive at the local group of galaxies, a collection of 54 different galaxies that is about 10 million light years across. But zooming out even further and we can see the Virgo supercluster, of which the local group here is just a tiny segment of. It's so hard for my brain to comprehend. I know it's kind of incomprehensible in a weird way, and this, like, there is no word to describe, like, there's not a word to describe how big this is. Big does not, huge, or, you know, that does not do it justice at all. This is insanely just... It just is. That's how big it is. <laughs> there are at least 100 other groups of galaxies just like our own local group inside of here, and the distance from one side to the other is a mind-numbing 110 million light years. Fuck. But even the massive Virgo supercluster is nothing but a quiet and tiny lobe of the great Laniakea supercluster, an enormous structure that is home to our galaxy. Laniakea. That's a cool name, isn't it? No, it was random, but Lani Akeo Supercluster, that's such a cool name. I wonder where that's derived from. Derived from. The Great Lani Akeo Supercluster, an enormous structure that is home to our galaxy as well as 100,000 other galaxies. 
The distance from one side to the other is 520 million light years, but from even there we can zoom out oh all the way God. to the entire observable universe and see that even the titanic Laniakea supercluster is just a tiny and insignificant part of everything. This is the observable universe, and it contains everything that we know of. It is home to at least two trillion different and individual galaxies, which together contain God. more stars than there are grains of sand on the entire Earth. The distance from Earth to any side of the observable universe is 46.5 billion light years, which means that the entire width is 93 billion light years across. What's perhaps even more interesting, however, is what actually lies beyond yeah. the observable universe. Keep in mind that the observable universe is all that we can currently see, and it's entirely possible that the rest of the universe outside of it is vastly larger and more fantastic than we can possibly ever imagine. It's so crazy that, like, you know, six minutes ago we were talking about Mars, and that we haven't even got to Mars yet. And, you know... I mean, g given that, you know, since, like, the turn of the 20th century, technology has been advancing uh, faster than it ever has been by quite a substantial amount, and that we're just still on... <laughs> you know, we haven't even put a scratch in it, put a dent in it. And as you said, you know, there's some places that will be gone before we even reach there, and maybe will be gone before we can even um, achieve the technology to even take us further than, uh, you know, past Mars, just to be able to explore our galaxy um it's quite weird i've never you know with all like the the, the space shows there is oh no actually that's, that's a lie i was gonna say in, in like all the sci-fis no one ever goes outside of our galaxy but there is there's, there's flipping those um but yeah sorry i'm talking too much we simply don't know what else is out there because the light from these incredibly distant places has not yet had enough time in the universe's history to reach us yet back on Earth. And the light from some places may never reach us at all. Because some parts of space very far away from Earth are expanding away from us faster than the speed of light, that means that the light from these places will mm, never in an okay. infinite amount of time reach Earth. Meaning that even if humanity is eternal and exists forever, there will still be an unknown number of places in the universe that we will never know about or ever see. So, it is very likely that as unbelievably enormous as it seems, the observable universe is just a tiny slice of what we can currently see of the entire universe. According to the theory of cosmic inflation that was proposed by Dr. Alan Guth, if it is assumed that cosmic inflation began at 10 to the negative 37th of a second after the Big Bang, and with the assumption that the size of the universe before inflation began... Okay, so, wait, just one more time to get my head around them numbers. ...that cosmic inflation began at 10 to the negative 37th of a second after the Big Bang, and with the assumption that the size of the universe before inflation began was equal to its age times the speed of light... Okay, then this sorry, I... I don't just want to give a dead, boring reaction. I actually want to understand what he's saying. Seventh of a second after the Big Bang, and with the assumption that the size of the universe before inflation began was equal to its age times the speed of light, okay. then this would seem to suggest that at the present day, the entire universe is 150 sextillion times larger than the observable universe. Fuck. That number for reference looks like this, with this many zeros. Let this number sink in for Time just a dissolve. moment. This would be similar to you thinking that the entire observable universe, everything that you could see was the size of a light bulb, but then realizing that in reality the entire universe is larger than the former planet of Pluto. Oh Imagine a light God. bulb in the center of Pluto, but we inside the light bulb were totally unaware that Pluto existed outside of it, and that's a similar situation to this. We are all so unbelievably small, but yeah. you shouldn't worry, because all that means is that there is so much left out there for us to discover together. This video was made possible. That is a phenomenal video. You know, it, it, it goes without saying that I don't have the intelligence to comprehend the numbers, as I'm sure many people don't, to comprehend exactly how we got the numbers and the breakdown of the numbers. I can comprehend why he's put them numbers in front of us and you know what he's you know attempting to 
to say to us. I get that bit. I fully understand that. Um, obviously, I don't have the, the scientific or the mathematical knowledge to, to break that down for anyone, of course. Um, that is a phenomenal video. You know, it. again, I know I said it earlier on in the video, but how humbling is that? Like, you think about little old you in your little old house with your little old problems, and then you see it, it makes you think, man, does it even really matter? You know, I don't think you should become narcissistic. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Nihilistic. But um, it, it, if anything, it should be a, a driving force. Say, you know, don't be scared of nothing, man. It, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. You know what I'm trying to say? You should take it in a positive way, not a negative one. Um, <laughs> you know what, makes, you know what um, I was thinking about during a small portion of the video? It's like, if the galaxy is this big, well, if the observable universe is this big, then who's to say that Star Wars isn't real? <laughs> who's to say that somewhere in that massive observable universe, there isn't a Darth Vader? And I'll leave you with that. <laughs> um, right, let's drop this video a like, man. Um... Yeah, man, thanks for joining me. Let me know what you guys think if you want to do more of these sorts of videos. I also got recommended another one, and I think it was called How Deep Is The Ocean? Or How The Ocean Is Way Bigger Than You Think, probably. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, let, let me know what you want to see. We'll definitely go back to history, obviously. We're not moving off that. Um, I don't want to feel like an idiot every time I turn on the camera. Um, but yeah, man, like, comment, subscribe. All of that good stuff, man. It means the world. You know it does. Um... But yeah, man, peace out, and I'll see you guys Monday. Peace.